Welcome back to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. American high school students doing absolutely terrible compared to their international peers. Down from 25th to 31st in math, 20th to 24th in science, and 11th to 21st in reading. What accounts for these horrible results? Well, we're very lucky to have the American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten here to respond on behalf of the teachers unions. Randy, welcome to the show. It's um, great to be with you, and uh, thank you for uh, taking me from Washington, where I was <laughs> listening to the PISA results today. How do you explain the slippage in these scores? So, you know, the countries that are out-competing us, actually, our country has actually been in the same place, and they are moving ahead of us. And what we've actually seen, um, and I, you know, I, I was able to listen to your last speaker, is that these last 10 years of this kind of top-down testing, 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 choice and competition actually hasn't moved the needle. If you actually look underneath these scores to what these other countries are doing, they're doing four things. They're actually understanding that poverty makes a difference and they're really leaning into equity, such as early childhood education. Number two, they are doing a lot with standards, which I know many of our states want to do and I'm very supportive of, but they're giving the supports to kids to make sure that they meet standards. Number three, they are deeply respecting their teachers and paying them and valuing them for the jobs that they're doing. And so what I would hope we do is actually look underneath what the, um, what, what the ranking is and do the things that these other countries have done to actually help improve our kids' um, prospects in the global economy. Randy, even the government itself has said pre-K education doesn't do a darn thing to predict future success. We will leave that aside. I want to focus in, though, on teachers. Well, actually, actually, actually the, in, the stat, in the statistics, that the OECD Secretary General said today is that the statistics in the PISA data show that the more kids got pre-K, like China is now doing two years of pre-K, the more it actually helps kids succeed when they're 15 and older. Randy, so there is new evidence that way. Why is there such a resistance by the teachers unions to getting rid of tenure, uh, basing pay on merit pay? Is there any other industry in the country uh, where basically you work for two years and you, it, it's very hard to fire you? Well, first off, tenure should be about fairness. It should not be a job for life. And if somebody cannot do their job, they shouldn't be there. The issue, frankly, though, if you look at the countries that outcompete us, they don't actually have these kind of pay by test scores. They actually don't even evaluate teachers by test scores. Testing of using testing for teachers actually is not something that they do. And they all actually value their teachers far more than we do. They don't actually have the conversation we're having right now about tenure. But you're totally right that if somebody can't do their job, they shouldn't be there. But tenure is about fairness. It's about letting us take risks. And that's why we need to have it. Randy, we had tens of thousands of minority parents marching over the Brooklyn Bridge in these last weeks to support school choice, uh, mostly poor parents. Uh, why is there such uh, support in those communities for school choice? And why don't you support it? Well, let me say this. We are, I have run three charter schools in New York City, one of which um, actually did far better than um, the person who organized those marchers. And I want to say this about that. If a public school actually took their kids out during a day of school to actually organize a political march, you would have justifiably been very critical of anybody who tried to do that. Randy, how do you, so explain, how do you explain the lines, mm -hmm. the hundreds and hundreds of kids, mostly minority kids, putting their names into lotteries desperate to get into better schools? Because every child and every parent wants a great neighborhood school for their kid. And when you actually poll parents, what they're telling us is they want their best choice to be a great neighborhood school, plus other choices as well. But more and more and more parents are saying, let's have a great public school system. In fact, 
That's part of the reason why Bill de Blasio was voted um, overwhelmingly as the mayor of the city of New York. Bottom line is, we want to make sure kids have great choices. But what we're also seeing is that from the PISA results, there actually has new, have new data that say, let's be cautious about this choice and competition piece because it's actually created more segregation. But I totally understand every parent wants to have a great school, a safe school for his or her child. And what we're trying to do is reclaim the promise of public education and make sure Every school is a great neighborhood public Randy, school. Randy, we've got That's about, what we we've need got to about do. 30 seconds left. What I'm hearing from you is we need to pour more taxpayer money into the public school system like we've been doing for the last 30 years with no results. Actually, the results, actually, the schools these days are better than they've ever been. It's not enough. And frankly, we should be investing more. We should be giving poor kids art and music. We should be making sure that we support kids for, with the standards that they need so that they can be the innovators of tomorrow. That is our primary investment that we should do. And we need, but we can't give a blank check, but we need to do things that work. And what the PISA results show us is the things that work. So we're in the same place as we've been, but that's because we've taken the wrong strategies. The strategy of choice and competition is a strategy of winners and losers. We need to make all kids winners. Strategy of choice and competition works in the private sector, but not for the public schools. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weigarten, thank you for that perspective. Thank you.